Welcome back and um, we've just crossed the border into the Northern Territory. Pretty big day of driving. We've been in the car about five hours, pretty over it. We've got about 20 kilometers to go and then we can stop for the night. So First roadhouse slash pub in the Northern Territory. We've got a heap of shoes on a clothesline. Not sure what it's about, but it's a bit of humor. Still got a fair way to go to Darwin. 1500 kilometers. We're getting there slowly. Right, we're at the roadhouse to the turn off to Ayers Rock. Aerodunda, something like that. And we've got all these bush chooks. They just all walked off. Get that away from the dog. Have a look at that beauty, would ya? Here's rock. Ha <laughs> ha, nah, just tricking ya. We're halfway there. This one's called Mount Connor. It gets a lot of people. The other night I've found the best spot for a barbecue. Oh, I think I've found a better one. Hey, this morning we've come to look at the Olgas. We're doing the Valley of the Winds walk called something else now I'm not sure the Aboriginal name I don't know how to pronounce it Kata Juta it's, it's a little the little brother of Ayers Rock it's probably 30 k's away Made it down to the next lookout, but I think that's enough for us. That's a pretty cool spot. Excuse my puffing. I've literally just run up here. I'm sure done my exercise today. Whew. Just at the lookout over the Olgas or Kata. Juta, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. There she is. So back when we were here 10 years ago, I actually walked up here. You can just faintly see where you used to be able to walk up. Yeah, God, it's a big rock. It took a few hours anyway. But I'm happy I did it before they closed it. Uh, we come around the other side and we're going to look at one of the water holes of Ayers Rock. If you come to Australia, it's probably you probably need to visit this place at least once. It's pretty amazing. Oh, I think the uh, entry price and it's all turned into a bit of a money grab, but uh, it's still worth a visit once. We're just waiting for Shane. He's just had to walk back to the car. It's not safe to leave anything out, especially leave your car unlocked. And we just started this walk and it's a bit like when you've got hair straighteners and you go to work and you think, did I leave them switched on? We're both saying, did we lock the car? So rather than risk it, he's walked back just to double check that we have actually locked it because we wouldn't want our stuff to get stolen or anything like that. So we're just going to stand here and wait and wave to everybody that goes past. <laughs> Are you waving to everyone that passes? <laughs> a watering hole. You wouldn't think there'd be water in the middle of the desert. It comes off the rock when it rains and it's still trickling actually. Uh, 
we've got a little cave here. This is apparently where they made their fires. Had a little relax. Good spot for a layback. Looks like a wave. Yeah, it does. A bit like wave rock. Yeah. This side hot right here, back in the day, one of the spirits got a big shotgun. And he shot it. There are all the bullet holes. No, the truth is they've been tunnelled out by a mole. Marsupial mole. Some sort of wombat looking thing. Today's adventure. We're two kilometres from the roadhouse and we've been out of fuel for a while. We must be running on bubbles. It's very exciting. <laughs> Shane's been watching the fuel gauge all the way from Uluru. But we're uh, going to make it. Hey, we've hit the red centre, Alice Springs. Got a monkey up on top of the sign. <laughs> and a monkey there. There's been a bit of bad press about Alice Springs lately and a lot of the tourists are bypassing it. So we're here for three days. We'll see a few of the sights and tell you what it's like. This morning we've come to the Road Transport Hall of Fame and the old Garn Museum. And I think we've got one very excited little boy. He just loves things with wheels, so I think he'll be happy checking out all the trucks and maybe getting a seat in them. Someone's in heaven. <laughs> Look at all the little toy trucks. What have you found, Isabel? What have we got in this one? Oh, Whoa. army bus. Look, Joel. It just continues on. It's pretty cool in here. Oh, have a look at this one, Granddad. A push bike with a gun on it. <laughs> and an engine at the back. Fuel tank. I could imagine you go and get the paper with this one. This is a place that truck drivers dream about. <laughs> Trucks everywhere. Here we go, we've even got a movie. You can watch, you can watch them drive on a truck. You're gonna be a truck driver? They're, they're massive, there's so much more space than I thought. Yeah, you drive all day. They're comfy though. They jump in your bed at night. <laughs> Trucker life. Have a look at this one. A bush chook. I think a guy in WA makes these. Uh, he's very clever. It's made out of an engine. All the hoses. It continues on. <laughs> if you love trucks, this is the place for you. <laughs> the old garden train, we've got the cattle class up the back. This is where all the higher paying customers go. I think, I'm not sure, I think that's a toilet. <laughs> Bunk beds. Got rooms, you get a sink. We have the bar with the uh, bartender. What drinks have we got today? Water. Ma'am, water? What are you having to drink, Joel? It's a bit pretend.
stopped in at Alice Springs Brewing. Give mum the night off cooking a few pizzas. Good buddy. Good morning. Here we are this morning at the what's it called, Shane? Simpsons Gap. Simpsons Gap in the in West, the, in the West McDonald's Ranges. Let's go and see what this one's about. These rocks, they're ancient, but they look real crumbly. I wouldn't stand underneath them too long. You see, just over here, there's been quite a big landslide. Pretty cool place. That was a pretty cool walk, wasn't it, Isabel? Yeah. Not too far, and what did we see at the end? Water. Big rock and water. Cold water. Did you have a good time, Joel? Yes. Mm. Good walking. Mm. Oh, what have you got? Mm. Something from the riverbed. Good boy. Just doing the walk up to Stanley Chasm. Ah. Hi. So we've come along to the next one. This one's called Stanley Chasm. Hey, we'll just give you a little bit of a rundown of what we think about Alice Springs. It's um, it's not too bad in the daytime. At night time is a bit worrying. We've had a neighbours that had a couple of neighbours that had got broken into. People put their hands in the windows. Oh God, Joel's fallen over. Um, and took bags and stuff. Um, but generally in the daytime, we've been to town, we've done excursions, like we've been out and seen things, we haven't hidden away, and it feels fine. You just don't go out at night. Yeah, you just got to use your common sense. Like, I wouldn't avoid the place, but people are. It looks like the caravan park's half empty and a lot of the shops in town are shut, which is sad. It is a bit of a sad place. But yeah, just use your common sense and... And I just went food shopping by myself and felt totally fine. The only time I was nervous was reversing out my parking spot in the car park, thinking, geez, don't hit a local, it could cause chaos. That's been fine. Yeah, don't go out at night time, I would say. Yeah, so it don't, don't could avoid... It be a different story. Yeah, don't avoid the place. There are things to do here, um, but just make sure everything's away at night and everything's locked, don't leave windows open or anything like that. But yeah, definitely don't avoid the place. Well, anyways, cheers for watching our video and watch us in our next one as we go further up towards Darwin. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.